What is going on, everyone? We're entering week two of the NFL season, so let's take a look at some of the storylines that we are hitting entering week two. To start us off here, we are looking at the one o'clock games, and we have the Browns and the Saints in New Orleans, and this is interesting because the Saints just got absolutely whipped around by Fitzpatrick and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and you have this Browns team where people expect them to be a little bit better this season. They tie the Steelers last week. Tyrod Taylor doesn't have his biggest game, his best game. Baker Mayfield sitting on the bench. How do the Browns respond? How do the Saints respond? Now, the Saints offense obviously were killer last week. They put up 40 points. Their issue was the defense, allowing 48. That's the problem. So how will both teams be able to attack their issues from last week? We then have the Panthers and the Atlanta Falcons. The, the NFC South is going to be a battle. Both of these teams are going to constantly beat up on each other. Constantly, constantly. It's a good division. The Falcons have an issue with their red zone and their offensive coordinator and, and they just it doesn't make sense with the talent that they have that they're not able to be a red zone threat. They're not able to use Julio in the red zone correctly. It just It's mind-blowing. So they have an opportunity to battle it out with a rival like the Panthers who are coming off a 16-8 a to eight win against the Dallas Cowboys. They did win, but I don't think they looked spectacular. I don't think they looked the way they would be happy with. They need to address some things offensively a little bit. You have Greg Olson and that injury. What's going to happen? So that's the next storyline. We have the Vikings at Lambeau Field against the Packers. We all know what Aaron Rodgers did. It was amazing. It was beautiful. It was the greatest thing we, we've seen in quite some time. But is he actually going to be able to play? He stated he was after the game. But he needed to get looked at again. He obviously has an issue with that knee. He couldn't even walk on it. He couldn't even put his foot down to throw the football. I just, I can't imagine the training staff saying he's allowed to go, looking at his future health. I'd be shocked, but we'll have to see. If it's Deshaun Kaiser, the Vikings should have this game, without a doubt. The Dolphins at the Jets, and I'm intrigued because, listen, was it a fluke what happened on Monday Night Football with the Jets having five interceptions with Sam Darnold looking great? No, I think Sam Darnold looking great is not a fluke. Maybe the defense... They're coming out saying they knew exactly what Matthew Stafford was going to run. They knew every single play he was going to run, and that's why he was jumping it. We're going to have to see how this one plays out. I'm interested to see how the Jets react to their big-time W. And the Chiefs at the Steelers, because the Steelers are no Le'Veon Bell. They tie the Browns. But on the other side, you have Tyreek Hill and Mahomes doing their thing dirty last week. So... Those are the 1 o'clock games that interest me the most and I think have some good storylines. Also, I believe the Bills have stated that Josh Allen is going to be, be is going to be playing and getting the first nod of his career. I'm shocked they didn't start him from the beginning with the quarterback play the Bills received last week. Okay, so the 4 o'clock games. The Lions at the 49ers. How do the Lions respond? How does Matt Patricia respond? Jimmy Garoppolo coming off of his first loss ever as a starting quarterback. They had a pretty hefty task last week in the Vikings, but how are they going to respond? How are the Lions going to do it, really, is what it comes down for for me. How does Matt Patricia and the pencil respond from that embarrassing loss on Monday Night Football. The Pats at the Jags. And this is just big, obviously, because the Patriots are who they are. The Jags, they're this defense that's a a beast. Leonard Fournette, questionable with this hamstring injury. So that is obviously a huge, crucial piece to their puzzle because Blake Bortles isn't going to be out there throwing for 750 yards to win them a football game. It's going to be their defense to win it for them, really. But that has... Some potential to be a really sick game. And the Raiders at the Broncos. And I want to see John Gruden. I want to see this Raiders team bounce back. I thought they played a pretty decent game last week. I did. It came down to the Rams have just more firepower. And when it mattered, they kind of took 
took the game away because they're a better roster. But I don't think John Gruden came out with a bad game plan, and I'm interested to see what he dials up against a Case Keenum and a Broncos team that came out and beat the Seattle Seahawks last week. And the 8 o'clock Giants-Cowboys. And this one is good for me because there is a really low percentage to make the playoffs once you start 0-2. And both of these teams are 0-1 right now. So this is literally a must-win game for both teams. It's must-win. It's must-win. And it's going to be interesting for them to battle it out. Because think about it. One of these teams is going to start 0-2. The way you start a season really can affect the mentality of a football team. You go 2-0, and you go 1-1, and or you go 0-2. There's a different mindset in that locker room. There really is. And for these teams to both be rivals to me, it's going to be entertaining to see which team it is that doesn't get to where they want to be, essentially. Keep in mind, by the way, with those 1 o'clock games, I kept out the Eagles-Buccaneers for a reason. I'm going to attack that in, in entirety. And then on Monday night, we have the Seahawks at Chicago, and I want to see the Bears respond from that unbelievable performance by Aaron Rodgers in the second half. I want to see Khalil Mack again. I want to see Trubisky. I want to see how the team responds from such a devastating loss. I just talked about how mentality affects the team. Well, what is their mentality now after that tough loss? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.